Okay, so wiring up batteries, there's two ways you can wire up any battery, whether it be an 18650 cell or a AA battery or whatever. You can either wire them in parallel, and that is where you connect the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative of each individual cell. Or you can do it in series, and that's where you get the negative of one cell and attach it to the positive of the other cell. And what that does is it adds their voltage. So if you have got 4.2 volts in this cell, you've got 4.2 volts in this cell, positive of cell A to the negative of cell B, we should have 8.2, 8.4 volts across the positive of this cell and the negative of this cell. And we can check that really quickly. It'll be sort of guesstimate because I don't know if these cells are charged or not. Well, we're about to find out, right? So the charge should be around 8.4. Don't think it will be. Oh, we got 8.3, so they're actually quite charged. But you can tell that the voltage actually did add. And then if we do an individual cell like this, it'll be around the 4. 4.1, something like that. 4.15. So that's wiring batteries in series, positive to negative. The voltages add. Now you can wire in parallel, and what that is, as I said before, positive to positive, negative to negative, and the voltages do not add in that configuration. So if we join these up like this, and they're connected electrically, if you measure the potential between here and here, you will only get 4.2 volts. So what's the advantage of doing that? Why would anyone do that? Well, there's a very, very important reason. Each of these cells can only dis like distribute a certain amount of current before overheating. So basically the rule of thumb is the less current you can, you know, get out of a cell at any one time, the longer it's going to live. So if you're sitting here drawing, like for them, vapor things that people do with the e-cigarettes, they use these cells and they draw high current from them, like a lot, like 10 amps, let's just say. The cell is going to get hot, right? It's going to get very hot and it's just going to damage the, the chemistry and it, they're just not going to like, you might get a few hundred charge cycles out of it. Whereas if you have a lot of cells in parallel, say one cell, one cell by itself drawing 10 amps, if you have 10 cells in parallel together. So you have 10 cells, the voltage is still 4.2 volts. But if you're drawing, if your load is drawing 10 amps, that means each cell is only seeing one amp. So therefore there's so much less stress on the actual chemistry of the battery and it's going to last way, way, way longer. And you gotta be especially careful with these recycled batteries that you've scavenged from laptop batteries, especially laptop batteries. All cells have, can be dissipated at a different amount of current, like they're rated for different amounts. So if you have a cell that you've scavenged from a power tool, it can safely be run at a, you know, a lot higher current compared to one that can be, that's been salvaged from maybe like a, one of them little portable power packs that charge your phone or whatever. So you've got to be careful. All cells can be, can, deliver different amounts of current based on their specifications and their needs. And really, if you're getting these Chinesium cells from batteries that you don't really know the origin, you, you sit on the low end and you only, you, you deliver the less amount of current as you possibly can. So I, I say like one amp is sort of my, what I want to be taking out of these cells at any one time, because I don't really know how they've been treated, or I don't, I don't know what exactly cells they are. Well, these ones I do, these are Samsung cells, so these can likely, you know, dissipate a little bit more, but you don't know how their life has been. You don't know their story. So one amp, that, 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 that's what I want to do. So now we know how to add in series and add in parallel on what they do. Let's try to design an actual battery pack for, you know, a potential purpose. So let's say we want to have a e-bike motor, uh, e-bike battery pack, 24 volts and let's say 250 watt motor. First thing you want to do is find out how many batteries you need to add in series to get to your voltage. So we already know that 4.2 volts is our 
you know, not uh, is our fully charged 18650 cell voltage. So we just want to go, what do we need? 24 volts. So we go 24 divided by 4.2, 5.7. So we round up to give it, give it more, more better. So we round up to six and let's just go six times 4.2 gives us 25.2 volts. So let's give that a test, hey? Let's get six of these cells and wire them in series. Positive to negative, positive to negative, positive, negative, eh, nah. No pain, no feelies. So we've got two, four, six. Now let's check the voltage. If they were fully charged, it should be 25.2 as we just calculated, but we already know that these are not fully charged, so it'll probably be less than that. Let's try to show you guys this. It'll probably be around 24 something, something, 23, 23.47. So that's just negative because I have the doobly doos back the front, doesn't matter. Okay, so let's just say that these were 25.2 and that they are fully charged. If we want to, if we have a 20, 250 watt uh, electric bike motor, well, all what is, is the voltage times the current. So to get the current, it's just the wattage divided by the voltage. So let's go 250 divided by, what was it again? 24, 24 equals 10.4 amps. And how much did we say we want to dissipate from each battery? And there's one amp, right, to be safe, because we don't know the origin of these batteries. We don't know their life. So that means if we were to hook that up to the battery now, to the, to the motor now, and kicked it over, it would run, it would start and it would go, but this, this battery here would be seeing 10.4 amps. And we only want to be using, we want these cells to be dissipating, to be delivering one amp max. So therefore, we need to add 10 of these in parallel. So our, our setup would be 6S, so if six cells in series, 10P. So that means we're gonna need 60 cells so it'd just be like this, whoops, like this, see you later, like that. So this setup right here, if these two were connected like that, that would be 6S 2P. And that means if we had our 10.4 amp current being drawn from the motor, from the load, each of these long cells, long batteries, would be seeing around two, around uh, five amps, right? Because we've just halved it, but that's still not good enough. We want to only see one amp. So that means we're gonna need another eight of these bad boys. So if we, you know, sit this up with eight more lines, so we had like this, let's draw. That's it. This is what we would want, and we would obviously fill in all the gaps with batteries. All the way down, but that's what you would want. You would want 6S, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10P. And that's probably being conservative. You could probably, you know, you could probably draw more than one amp out of each of these cells, but to be conservative, you limit the current. The lower the current is, the longer the battery's gonna last. And also the more you have in parallel like that, the, the, the greater distance you're gonna be able to, to ride your push bike, right? Because there's more, you know, amp hours, more better. Let's maybe do another example. Say you wanted, uh, say you wanted to power like camping gear or whatever, which is like 12, 12 volts. Well, that's 
basically half. So what you would want is 3s, so you know, 4.2, 4.2, 4.2 is 12.6, and that's it. If you if you had a 12 volt uh, like light or a 12 volt anything, you hooked it up to there, it would run, right? But you just got to see how much current that your load is going to draw, and then basically accommodate that by adding more in parallel. So if it's going to draw three amps at 12 point at 12 volts, well, we only want we want to do one amp, right? So like that. Therefore, each of these batteries, each of these lines is only going to be drawing one amp, so it's going to be safe. And the batteries are gonna, you know, get a lot of lifetime compared to if you just had 3S, where they're gonna, the chemistry is gonna get all fucked up because you're drawing lots of current through, through the battery. And that's basically it, and that's how you wire up 18650 cells to do anything. And it's the same for anything. If you need to do 100 volts, it's the exact same. You're just gonna need shitloads of these in series, and it's gonna be a very big battery. But that's it. Thanks for watching. Oh, fuck. Fuck. This is how this. Fuck. Okay, no, that's incorrect. So let's start again. Let's start again.